Is it better to make a number of adequate weapons that are easy to operate and maintain, or should you start with the premise that if it's not perfect, it's not good? One theme that resonates in all discussions of World War II and has come up in both air and naval power is this idea of gigantism or the age-old debate on whether quality or quantity is more important. And nowhere is this clearer when we get to questions of tanks and artillery. In other words, is it better to make a, a number of adequate weapons that are easy to operate and maintain, or should you start with the premise that if it's not perfect, it's not good. In other words, we want a few quality weapons, even if they're somewhat impractical uh, or they're hard to maintain or they're expensive to produce, at least on paper, they're superior to what the enemy has. In the terms of tanks, had the Germans not built 1,600 Tigers or 600 King Tigers or not have wasted so much money on this mouse program, a, a crazy idea of building a 200 ton super tank, then they might have built another 5,000 Mark IV tanks that with their latest improvement and updating were almost comparable to the T-34 at the end of the war. Same is true with the V-1 and V-2 programs as we saw. If they hadn't have invested in the V-2 rocket program and used those resources to either build four engine bombers or more V-1 cruise missiles, they would have been far better off against the enemy. They would have uh, inflicted far more damage. But there's some kind of innate human desire to make something big and perfect, even if it's not practical. In terms of artillery pieces, the same dichotomy warred within German planning discussions. They came up with this 88 millimeter uh, flak gun that turned out when it was, the trajectory was lowered, it turned out to be the best anti-tank gun. It was very easy to use. It was very accurate, it was very easy to transport, it was very easy to make, and it was absolutely lethal to every uh, Allied tank that came in, came in contact with it. But the problem was, as we said earlier, if they're needed to protect German cities from Allied bombers, then they're not blowing up Soviet tanks. So the question is, why not build more of them? And one of the answers why you didn't build more of them was, Hitler had this fixation with gigantism. And this manifested itself out with things like Gustav, not 88 millimeters, not 100 millimeters, not 200 millimeters, not 400 millimeters, not 700 millimeters, 800 millimeters, largest gun made in World War II. 7,500 Germans soldiers were needed just to transport it to the Eastern Front, reassemble it, and then maybe you could shoot one projectile per minute, but not more than 200 or 300 when the barrel started to wear out. And although the projectile would weigh three or 4,000 pounds, depending on the uh, explosive that it was, that was uh, desired, when it was fired at, say, Sevastopol, it wasn't the reason that the Germans took Sevastopol. They were much better with smaller caliber, faster firing, easily maintained uh, cannon. But in addition to Gustav, they had a number of huge mortars, 400 millimeter mortars, 200 millimeter mortars. And the German uh, industrial sector, taking orders from Hitler, spent an inordinate amount of its resources on building uh, fantastic weapons, big weapons, huge weapons, when it should have made much smaller ones. This was a directly opposite of the Russian and the American idea especially, especially when we come to artillery. The Soviet Union made more artillery pieces, over 300,000, than almost any other country. And they killed about 75% of German soldiers who were killed on the Eastern Front. And they even went a step beyond artillery with the Katushka rocket. They thought, you know what, making an artillery barrel and rifling the inside and requires a lot of expense and craftsmanship and some knowledge or expertise to aim and shoot an artillery piece. Why not just make a tube and put a rocket in it and makes them so easy to fire and in such quantity that they'll blanket the general vicinity. And that turned out to be a brilliant doctrine as well. But again, it reflects the idea of quantity, good enough, 
uh, versus a few uh, high quality caliber weapons. Thank you for watching. We hope you're enjoying our highlight series and invite you to explore our complete course on the Second World Wars. All of Hillsdale College's online courses are free and for everyone who loves to learn.